First, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm so happy to see you here. Uh, I know that it's now time to try many classes. I know you haven't decided yet to come, but I'm happy that you are here. <laughs> All right, so before we, we start, I'd really like to hear uh, about you. Before I introduce myself, I'd like to hear a little bit more about you, uh, who you are, uh, what is your research area, which department you belong to, and if you like, you can say something about your background. Just 30 seconds around the table. Can we start? Wow, okay, very interesting guys. Thank you very much. I think all of you are in the right place. Um, <laughs> uh, previously, so this is our third year having this class. And previously we actually had people from uh, computer science. So it was a bit tricky because this class uh, is not really about um, learning how to code or how to uh, use some uh, application to make games, that kind of thing. Because I think what is common amongst us is that we are uh, medical, um, we have medical background. So we don't really we're not experts in computer programming and things like that. But this course is going to help you to know exactly how to collaborate with an expert mm -hmm. in, in programming. Mm -hmm. Okay, so <clears throat> um, the, cl the class is a half course. It's made of seven classes. And then you will get one credit for seven classes. And then it's every days or every Fridays between uh, uh, 14.45 and 6.15. I think our last class will be around 20, 25 November. Uh, the director for this course, uh, maybe most of you know, uh, it's uh, uh, Professor uh, Kiara. Unfortunately, he's not here today. He's on a business trip. Uh, he would have loved to come here and see you and greet you and tell you more about why um, he is offering this, this course. But I hope I can do that on his behalf. And then my name is uh, Pekumusa Lukele. Uh, please call me Peki. Peki, <laughs> yes. I think it's, it's easier like that. <laughs> Just call me Peki. Okay. Um, I think the big question is, well, why am I standing here? Because actually, uh, as you can see, I'm also a, a student probably just like you. But why am I standing here uh, instead of uh, maybe Keras and Seth standing here? Uh, I, I'll, I'll explain that a little bit. Um, first, I have a very compelling reason for thinking about gamification. In my country, one of the most serious problems we have, public health problems, is HIV. So when I came to study in Japan, I was like, oh my God, so much information I got here in the School of Public Health. And I was thinking, wow, well, maybe in Switzerland they don't have enough information. And I went back to my country to look now carefully at how things were, and I found actually there are many uh, this kind of things, um, posters, billboards, even big billboards, um, warning people and teaching people about HIV, mm -hmm. how they can prevent it, what it is, how they can be safe. So the problem is not knowledge. It might be knowledge in addition to other problems, but knowledge is not the only problem that they have. So in my master's study, I conducted research to find out what is the problem. And I interviewed uh, some people in focus group discussions. And one of the striking d uh, discoveries was that uh, people were experiencing HIV information fatigue. Yeah. And coming to think of it, HIV was, was uh, first noticed in my country around the 80s. So now it's been 30 years of you know the government doing big efforts to try to warn people against HIV. So people are getting tired of these things because if you open the radio, you hear something about HIV. If you go to your school, you hear something about HIV. If you're in the road in the bus, you hear something about HIV. If you walk in the streets, big billboards, HIV. So people are getting kind of used to the information and starting to ignore the information. So 
I was thinking to myself, well, under these circumstances, how do we engage a fatigued audience? I asked myself this question and I consulted widely. How? The people need the information, they need the behavior change, but they, they don't really take it into their minds. They didn't really practice what they learn. Why? So I started to think about a new uh, topic to me, which was gamification or serious games. So from 2013 to, to, to today, I've been learning about serious games. So I would like to share the little things that I know about serious games with you. I started my quest to learn about serious games by attending a conference. Uh, it's called Games for Health uh, Europe conference. I can, I can really encourage you to join. I think they have it every year if you're really interested. So I joined this conference. I saw many kinds of different games. Um, some exciting, some not so exciting, some interesting, different kind of games. But I could notice one thing consistent throughout. The games were excellent, they were very nice games. But I could tell that the person who designed originally, who had this idea, is a developer. I could tell. And then I could tell that the person who designed this game, this person is health background. I could tell very easily. So the, the games were not really, at that time, were not really merging um, the game constructs and the health constructs. They were not really merging very well. So I, I could easily tell, and most of the games, I thought, okay, it's a very nice game, very nicely designed, very nice authentics, but I, can, I cannot play this game two times, or three times, or four times. Many games, not even in this conference alone, even games online that I see every time. So I decided to, to learn from that, that okay, I can see some weaknesses, and I can see some strengths, and how can we improve in, 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 in my own intervention. So I started speaking to some experts in the field. I started attending game conferences, even around Japan. And that is how I arrived at you know, sharing my, my knowledge with uh, some students about serious games. So about this course, um, we have three simple objectives. The first objective is to introduce students to serious games. Uh, in Japan, we are very lucky because most Japanese have already played games almost extensively. Uh, Japan is in the world, I think it's leading in terms of uh, expenditure in games. So uh, we are lucky in Japan, most people already know a lot about, about uh, games. And then next, um, we just like to help students understand how to get started in gamifying uh, a certain public health intervention. Since all of you are already working in public health, thinking about public health, so maybe you'll we'll start to uh, think about how you can start developing your own individual interventions. And then lastly, the course tries to encourage students to design measurable um, health game interventions. This is one of the hardest things to do, how to design a game that can be measured in clinically or epidemiologically important uh, constructs. It's easy to, 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 to measure the doors of the game, like how many times people play the game up to what level, or some metadata inside the game. It's easy to measure those, but are they really epidemiologically important to stimulate change? That's the part that's a little bit challenging and hard to do. So we'll try to give you ideas on what we have done and what other as, as, uh, uh, experts in the field have done. So in a nutshell, we're going to start by trying to understand what games are and then look at how to get started. Then finally, uh, do some practicals by seeing real games that are actually being deployed in, in, in people. And then also, uh, you'll have a chance to make presentations about uh, some game uh, idea that you might have. <coughs> uh, before I continue, I just want to state that, you know, as public health uh, you know, researchers, we, not only us, I mean everyone, ha have gotten very good in identifying risk factors. 
most of our studies, including myself, I identified factors associated with uh, risky sexual behaviors in my master's paper. So we are very good in identifying those kind of risk factors. And sometimes we are also good in measuring some uh, effects of certain interventions or drugs or therapy, therapies, etc. We're very, almost relatively good at those things. But um, in terms of designing an intervention that will last and have um, effects over a long period of time, I think it's one area that we still need to improve on as public health officials. If you've taken Social Epidemiology 1 and Social Epidemiology 2, I mean, you, you have understood um, the insights into how to develop those kind of interventions, um, which this course tries to uh, also address that. Let's go beyond identifying the risk factors. Let's try to have some input in identifying or implementing um, um, uh, solutions to those risks. So I mentioned that we've got different experts that will be coming to share with us their knowledge. Uh, next week we'll have uh, Mr. Nori Hisawada. Uh, he is uh, an executive of a serious, pub a serious game publishing company uh, located in Tokyo. Uh, he'll tell us about types of uh, serious games and gamification. Then next I will share with you uh, intervention mapping and uh, starting to think about evaluating a, a game. And then also Mr. Wada will come again to share with us some game mechanics and what things we can link with uh, the qualities of a game. And then also uh, there's an assistant professor, uh, Fujimoto, from the University of Tokyo. Uh, he is one of the founders of a serious games organization in Japan, one of the first. So he'll also come in to share with us his perspective on trends and where he sees the industry in Japan and globally. And then also I will share with you an, an intervention called Swaz Yolo that we have created uh, uh, together with experts in developing company that tries to uh, solve the problem that I ident identified earlier on. And then also we have got um, uh, associate professor uh, Matsuguma from Kyushu University. He will share a lot about uh, rehabilitation games. So uh, please look forward to, to the next coming lectures. I hope you will enjoy as I have enjoyed over the past few years. And then the, 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 the scope, the general overview of this class uh, will be gamification, serious games and simulation learning. And then uh, the evaluation, 30% uh, will be participation, uh, group work, uh, group discussions, and you will need at least 30% uh, in total to be credited in this class. Okay, so, uh, sorry, 60% to be credited in this class. So uh, today we start on this part. So we're going to progress throughout uh, uh, this, this progression line. And then I just want to mention that maybe in Japan, usually in a class, sensei speaks a lot, teaches you a lot, and then you go away. But uh, in this class, I really encourage active participation, not only listening, but active participation. So uh, please feel free to ask questions, feel free to comment or share your thoughts in any of the topics, even uh, topics that spark you to think about something unrelated to the class. Please feel free to share. Okay? All right? Okay. Thank you. <laughs> and then also, um, um, how many of you have played a game in the past week? Yes? Yes? Yes, you played a game? Did you play a game? Did you play a game? Yeah. Oh, Sugoi. <laughs> this is the first time. Sugoi. <laughs> Wow, I'm really interested in what games you played. <laughs> yeah, so I, I always encourage to play some kind of game. It's, it's always nice to, once, once you, you take this class and you start reading about these things, you'll start noticing some things that you didn't notice before, which I, which I found very interesting. Um, some of the 
the interesting things I learned from this class is something called um, curve of interest. Um, every time I see a movie, I see exactly this thing that I learned. How the, the plot is, how the climax is, how they keep you focused in the movie for the first 10 seconds you watch the movie. Same applies in games. So you'll start seeing many, many of these things as you play games, uh, the next game you play. So probably to define what gamification really is, um, it's good to first start with what it is not. There is a lot of, uh, should I say, uh, vibe or wave that is associated with games. Many people are beginning to be interested in gamification, which is excellent. But sometimes they misunderstand what uh, gamification really is. And it's always good to start there. So you all play games, you know badges, points, and rewards. In total, gamification is not only these things. So some people equate doing this to a health intervention as doing something like this. Just taking broccoli and putting uh, some chocolate and giving your kid or your sister or your brother. So it's not that. And it's not uh, meaning that it's easy to change behavior. Behavior change is not easy at all. It's not an easy thing. And uh, it's, it's not even new. Gamification is not necessarily new. The term might be new, but we have been having gamification for a very long time. Uh, we'll, we'll, throughout the course, you would hear a lot of, about that. And then also, perfect for behavior change. Gamification is not perfect. It's not the perfect solution for behavior change. If you have any uh, behavioral problem, it doesn't mean that you can always solve it with gamification. It's not a perfect um, um, area. And it's also not easy to create. I mentioned that uh, in many places or many games I've seen, uh, it's always easy to, to know which, who created this game. Is it a health professional or is it uh, someone from industry? Based on the type of game, it's always easy to know because if it's a health professional, the game will be too much on health things. It will just fail in it being a game. Not always, but most of the time. If it's a, a, a game developer, the game will be too, you know, without any value in health. So you can always notice these differences. So it's not easy to create. And also some people think that, no, you know what, games are only designed for children, you know. But it's not the case. Adults play games. I also play play some games. Mm -hmm. All right. So <clears throat> to experience uh, gamification, actually, before I continue, I want to acknowledge uh, the author of uh, this book or this book. Most of the materials in this first lecture will be based on this book. I found his descriptions very easy to understand and very readable and they make practical sense. So uh, I like to, if you, if you want, you can have a look at this book. So most of the things discussed are based on, on what he writes in his book. <clears throat> so before we continue, uh, you have 12 seconds for this game challenge. Okay, um, do you have a watch? Who's got 12 seconds? Okay. In these 12 seconds, I'm going to ask you a question. And then you're going to figure out the answer in your head. After that, you're going to raise up your hand. The, the person who raises their hand the first is the winner of this challenge. Okay? And there's a prize for that person. <laughs> okay? The prize is a Kit Kat chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think you played this game before, right? Someone played this game before. No? Okay. Okay. All right. Are you ready? Can I please time 12 seconds? Thank you. Okay. So um, I will first tell you without the timer 
And then when I finish the sentence, you start thinking about the answer. Um, I will start the count, the timer, okay? So here's the challenge. Name four countries that start with the letter U. Time starts now. Oh, okay, okay, <laughs> wow. okay. Anyone will follow? Should I tell the answer? No, okay. anyone else? Just hold it. Four. Okay, go ahead. Um, United Kingdom, Uruguay, um, Uzbekistan. Oh, why not? Oh, come on, <laughs> I don't believe it. Ah, uh, I just remember the song. Uruguay, United Kingdom, Uzbekistan. Um, oh my god, sorry, I forgot. <laughs> okay, go ahead. <laughs> Uganda, okay. <laughs> okay, so that took eight seconds. Awesome. You've just experienced gamification. I will, I will explain how. <clears throat> But in, in this little exercise, all the elements, most of the elements in gamification were included. If I was teaching you about countries in the world, um, you would probably always find an easier way to remember these countries after this exercise, mm. right? Than just to say, there are four countries that start with a, a, a U. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight countries. Mm. Please remember four of them in the test. It will be much easier for you to remember like this way. Well, that's arguable, but some people think so. Uh, next, uh, I'd like to show you another example. Uh, 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 sometimes you've seen this one? Yeah. I, I yes. Guess, I guess, I guess. It's an old one. I know, I know this. OK. OK, for the sake of those who don't, let's play it. They have many videos. I encourage you to take, just type the fun theory on YouTube. You'll find many of their videos. Very interesting concepts that they use. So in this video, um, the goal was to encourage people to use the staircase from the subway, right? So they use this to kind of motivate people to do exactly that. Another example, um, that I can give five. is this one. Collected a bottle of water. So this is an app. Two point four kilometers, seventeen minutes. Zombies attacked a nearby farmhouse. The survivors are on the roof. We can't just leave them there to die. So as you run, 
they tell you things like run faster, they promote intermittent exercise. So they ask you to pick some things as you run, or run slower, or run faster, or they encourage you. You cannot leave people to die. Do your best. So this is games that really encourage uh, activity in, in, in ways that um, are kind of creative uh, to achieve uh, health goals. This is another game. Uh, this game is actually unique in many ways. Uh, have you played this game? But you've seen it, right? Um, level 22. Oh! <laughs> Way ahead of me. <laughs> <laughs> Have you played? Yeah. So the nice thing about this game is that um, applications like, like Zombie Run, um, you buy them because you want to run, you know. So the, you, you first you, you, you think, ah, you know, I need something to motivate me. So maybe this app is a good app. It will help me. But this game... This game, the purpose is not for you to walk around. So you, 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 you buy this game or you download this game, not because you want to exercise, but you want to play, genuinely play. But in the process of playing, you get to lose some calories because you walk around five kilometers or they, you want to hatch your egg or things like that. So it's very unique um, in, in a way. Uh, some people say it's a good example of gamification. Some people say, no, it's not gamification at all. But it's really uh, exciting game because you actually stand up and start walking around, which is good. Okay, so um, in groups of three, can you just, uh, uh, maybe you can close the, the handout, and then can you just discuss uh, within two minutes, what do you think a definition of gamification could be? Seeing the first example that we did and seeing these different videos that we, we have seen, um, one for running, one for uh, walking, uh, uh, another for walking up the stairs. Seeing these examples, what comes into your mind? What is a definition of uh, gamification? In our group discussion, uh, we have some kinds of idea. Uh, for example, uh, the game kitchen is uh, have an element, an element of uh, feeling funny or interesting. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. In addition, uh, we uh, it has, has an element of uh, playing a role. We we play a role uh -huh. in the in the specific situation, such as Pokemon Go. Uh -huh. <coughs> we are Pokemon trainer, <laughs> and we we want yeah. to catch a Pokemon. The rare so Pokemon. But <laughs> as a result, we have, we have many many much much exercise. So to uh, achieve. Other uh, to achieve other uh, aim, we play a role in a specific game. <coughs> okay, okay, nice. Anything else? <laughs> I think so fun is extra fun. Extra fun. Yeah. It extra fun. Mm -hmm. When you accomplish something, there's accomplished, mm -hmm. feeling of accomplishment. But with gamification, you would taste an extra fun. Wow. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Very interesting. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. Playing, playing, yeah. Playing. Playing. To make it play. Play, playful. Playful. Mm, I see. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Uh, group. Uh, Uh, fun uh, also. Uh, fun. And um, health benefit. Health benefit. Mm. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, um, yeah, we agree with like because gamify, gamification means like we the normal or normal or regular things we make it it fun we make it like as a game yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so the keyword is like fun <laughs> the keyword is fun <laughs> okay 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 uh -huh. okay does it always have to be fun okay let's continue <laughs> uh, maybe we, we can answer that yeah. question uh, fun. Mm. Mm. Accomplishment. Accomplishment. That's an important one. Achieve. Achieve. Yeah, okay. Something. Something. Yeah, something bigger than you. Mm -hmm. In, in Park Mungo, professor invites you. Please help me. Oh, it's bigger than me, <laughs> right? I'm just a normal person. <laughs> professor asked me to help him achieve something. It's bigger than me. So if I accomplish, I feel good. Interesting. Um, we'll, we'll touch a little bit about that. Okay, so to, to, to really understand uh, gamification, um, Professor Carl uh, Kapp thinks that it's nice to first uh, start by defining what a game is. So he defines a game as uh, a game is a system in which players engage in an abstract challenge defined by rules, interactivity, and feedback that results in a quantifiable, often eliciting an emotional reaction. So key words that we can pick from this definition of games is that a game is a system. This is very important, the first part, the system. All parts of the game are, should be connected. All parts of the game should be connected. In the first example, I gave you uh, a task and I explained the rules. And you became one system. If when she raised up her hand, no one else could raise up their hand because the system is acting in one way, this way. Right, so you become, uh, uh, it, the game becomes a system. Which players engage in an abstract challenge, right? So in the example of uh, Runner 5 or Zombie Run, um, you, you are building a base and then you put on your headphones, then they tell you you have to run to collect some supplies. When you turn a corner, they tell you run faster. There are zombies right behind you, <laughs> you know. It's kind of a challenge, right? And then they are made by rules, right? You, you cannot just be on, like in Pokemon Go, um, you, you cannot, they tell you, they ask you, are you, are you walking or you are a passenger, you know? Because they don't want you to break the rules. In, in this case, they're just discouraging people to drive and play. But the rule is you should not play while driving. So there are rules, certain rules, different rules within the game. And then also the outcome, the outcome you know. Let's, let's, let's get into details about this definition. We look at each of these words in a little bit more detail. So first, about, let's look at the system. Is a set of interconnected elements uh, that occur uh, in a space inside the game. Um, scores are linked to actions, and actions are limited by rules. For example, 
if the point, if the, the, the whole point of the game is to get the highest score, there should be actions governed by rules within getting a high score. Otherwise, they can just create a big button here and just say press and get 1 million points. But it's not fun, it's not interesting, right? So there should be rules that govern the point system within the game. And then also, players. Players uh, involve a person either interacting with uh, the game or interacting with other players within the game. Uh, later, I will refer to players as an audience because us as public health uh, people or epidemiologists or physicians, we like to think about uh, um, audiences. Who is our target audience? So I refer to players as audiences. And then players in gamification are our target audience. Next, uh, they mention an abstract. Um, games typically involves an abstraction of reality and uh, typically take place in a narrowly defined game space, right? So there's reality and there's game space, but the reality somehow you can imagine in the game space. You can imagine everything in reality within a small area in a smartphone game or in a computer game or in a running game. And then also I mentioned this, there's a challenge, uh, players achieve goals, which, which uh, uh, is already mentioned, that it's very important that players achieve goals. And later on I will discuss a little bit about this point because it determines a lot of many outcomes in, in, in game design. So a game becomes boring without any sort of challenge, right? So. Um, the game should be hard, but not too hard. It should be easy, but not too easy. Uh, there's actually a, a well-defined uh, uh, theory that explains this. We'll discuss it soon. And then next, um, there are rules, as I've already mentioned. The rules of a game define the game. They define uh, uh, the structure and what is allowed and what is not allowed and its artificial constructs, so within the game. They define the sequence of play, they define the winning state, uh, they define what is fair and what is unfair for you to do uh, uh, in, within the context of, of that game. The next thing in the the next term in the in the definition is interactivity. Players interact with one another uh, with the game um, or the game environment. Inter interactivity is probably one of today probably one of the largest components of game because games interact with they call them socially aware. They interact with uh, where you are, right? Physically where you are or they interact with uh, who is your friend on Facebook. Um, interactivity is part of the, in our days, uh, interactivity is part of the very important components of, of games. And then also there's feed, feedback. Feedback is also probably one of the most important uh, components of games. Um, it, it also allows us, health professionals, to add something in the game that will uh, advance health. Feedback combo component. <clears throat> Next, there's a quantifiable outcome. So you always know when you, you've won. There's usually no doubt if you won or not. You know, you just know because of your score or because of the outcome. It's either you die or you have another life or things like that. Or you can catch uh, 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 anything on Pokemon Go. <laughs> And there's also that emotional re reaction. Uh, either you lose or you win, you know, it has to attach some emotion to it. Um, they call it from the thrill of victory, you know, that feeling, yes! <laughs> you know, that feeling, you cannot, it, it, you cannot uh, 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 equate it with anything else. If you say, yes, I got it. Or that agony of defeat, oh no. You feel like throwing your phone down or 
throwing your screen uh, out of the window, you know, it's something you feel inside. So that emotional reaction uh, that games uh, generate is very important. So at times it can be frustrating, sometimes it can uh, incite anger or some sadness, but the stronger the feeling, the more engaging a game is. Right. So we've defined all these terms one by one, and all together, these terms uh, come together in this way. So a player gets caught up in playing a game uh, because of the instant feedback and uh, constant interaction uh, are repeated, are related to the challenge of the game, which is defined by rules, which all work within the system to provoke or uh, to provoke yes, an emotional reaction, and finally results in a quantifiable outcome within an abstract version of a larger system. So this is how all these terms come together to produce a, a, a gaming experience. But then, what about gamification? Because now we've been defining a game in general. Well, on the surface, they say that uh, uh, the use of game mechanics to make learning more fun. So. They agree with the, with the <laughs> sentiments that you, you already uh, shared. But underneath the surface, <clears throat> there's an idea of engagement, autonomy, and meaning. The deeper part of the game, um, there's a part that engages beyond um, everything else. Do you know, uh, every Sunday, I, 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 I use the bus and travel for one hour. And it's a very, very long journey. Every, every time, one hour. And depending on which game I'm playing, it's either I will just play and then say, oh my God, I have to go out of the bus, which is a feeling I like, compared to just sitting there, ah, this game is finished, okay, let me find another one. You know, let me find another one. So. <clears throat> The meaning, the result that you get in the game is very important. Um, when I play, these days I'm, I'm, I'm playing uh, a game and when, I, when, I, when I'm still playing, without notice, I find myself, I've, we've already reached uh, where I go. So to me, that, is, that shows a certain degree of engagement within the game, which is a, which is a, good, which is a good thing. And there's also this part uh, called a story. Most games have a story. Most serious games have a story. And most uh, uh, gamification have a story. So games give an experience give experiences meaning, they provide a set of uh, boundaries within a safe environment to explore, to think, and to try out new things. Um, games provide uh, uh, the motivation to succeed and they reduce the steam of failure. We'll, we'll, we'll hear more about this um, as we continue. So, um, a definition that uh, has been suggested for gamification is using game-based mechanics, um, aesthetics, and game thinking to encourage people to motivate action and promote learning, and lastly solve some problems. And again, words that are important to note here are game-based mechanics. Aesthetics, we'll discuss about them. Uh, game thinking, engagement, motivation, action, and uh, solving some problems. So let's look at each of these game thinking, ga game based thinking. So it's using the concept in the definition of a game described previously to create uh, a type of experience that people want to invest their time, their brain share, and energy towards doing. So that's what uh, game based uh, talks to. And then mechanics. The mechanics of playing a game include uh, the levels, 
uh, the, uh, the badges, uh, the progress bars, the point systems, the scores, and the time constraints. Um, mechanics alone, though, are insufficient uh, in uh, making a successful gamification experience. Points, badges, rewards, leaderboards alone and are insufficient. So you cannot just uh, say because uh, you, you go upstairs, you get 10 points, then that's, that's, that's all about the game. It's, it's, it's insufficient. There has to be a deeper meaning towards everything. And then aesthetics uh, describe uh, the, the user interface of the game, how the game looks, how the game feels, um, you know, sometimes we, we judge things by just looking. So you just look once and you know I'll play this game or not. Depending on how it feels. And as you play during the first few minutes of player, you look at how the game feels. How do you think the design is? What do you feel about the game? So aesthetics describe the feeling of the game. The user interface part. How it looks. How the vi visuals are, are carried out, or how the story is is told with the, the the visuals and also the music sometimes. Game thinking uh, is the idea of thinking about an everyday experience, uh, like for example jogging or running, and converting it into an activity that has elements of competition, cooperation sometimes, exploration or storytelling. You know. <coughs> It is how a runner can run 10 kilometers escaping zombies because of the story that they are being told. They find themselves, wow, I've just ran one kilometer, two kilometers without thinking about it. Because what makes most of the activities that we do a little bit harder to do is that you are, you are there every second, every minute you realize I am running. Oh my God, I'm running so heavy but if you do that activity and get engaged in a certain story and then the dynamics change a little bit it is the link between in-game decisions and real life uh, decisions so <clears throat> the place to start in gamification is is probably not to think about the technology you will use in the game. The good place to start is to think about the behavior you want to change. And then you can think about the, the game elements or components of a game that you want to use to achieve that behavior change. Also, engagement or engage is another big uh, component of serious games or gamification. And an explicit goal of gamification is to gain a person's attention. Right, to gain a person's attention. And of course, uh, to involve him or her in the process you, you, you have created. Engagement of a person uh, is the primary uh, purpose or focus of gamification. You will see two distinct uh, uh, serious games that try to achieve this in this class. And you'll get to observe how they do it, what makes people actually play the game and forget about some, everything else and just focus on playing the game. At that time, achieving um, health uh, uh, outcomes. Engagement of a pe person is the main focus of gamification. And then also uh, they motivate action. Motivation is the process that energizes and gives uh, direction and purpose uh, to behavior and actions. To achieve motivation, the challenge should, be, should not be too hard or not be too easy. You need to understand your audience very well. That is why in the course curriculum, I really recommend uh, Masako Sensei's class because um, he talks a lot, she, she talks a lot about understanding your target audience. And then the application of uh, social epidemiology is maybe critical in this regard. Okay, I think we still have time. So. So if you, if, you, if you forget everything I have said today, please remember this image. 
Um, I, I cannot pronounce his name very properly, but he's a famous uh, <coughs> uh, psychologist. <coughs> um, he, he came up with uh, uh, this concept called the flow. It's, it's been used uh, many, many times. I, I looked up his paper and he's been cited close to 2,000 times. His paper has been cited 2,000 times, not downloaded, but just cited to more than 2,000 times. So you, you should check it. He, he describes um, a, a, a point he calls it an optimal um, experience. He says that uh, this represents increasing difficulty for any activity. It's applicable to games as well. And then here also uh, an increasing skill needed to accomplish that activity. It's described here. So here, the skill needed is too easy. You don't need much of skills. And then here, the skill needed is too hard. You need a lot of skills to achieve. Uh, I mean, the level of difficulty is too hard in the side. So he says a game shouldn't even go like this straight line. It should go in a way like this. Not out of this boundary where the person finds it just hard enough, not too hard but hard enough, yeah, hard enough. And not too easy, but easy enough. This is the sweet point that uh, most serious game designers, developers, uh, want a player to have when they play the game. Because if, if the time or skill it takes to play the game, at this point is up here. To, it needs so much skill to get started in the game. You already lose a lot of your audience. Those that are able to achieve that skill start, but maybe they won't stay for a long time playing that game. They will fall out. So eventually the uptake of the game and playing of the game and therefore achieving your, 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 your intervention goals will be harder to do. All designers seek to keep players within this optimal game flow. It's applicable to many, many areas of, of life, even in business. So if you if you have time, please please Google his paper and uh, and uh, and check it out. Uh, I'm sure you learn a lot. So so there there are two concepts uh, when we talk about games for doing for anything other than entertainment. Um, there's also something called serious games. I mentioned it a little bit. Um, so, you know, in academia, we like to define things very well. We like to have good definition of what we are talking about uh, so that we can, you know, refer to it or describe it very well. So, a serious game is an experience designed using game mechanics and game thinking to educate individuals in specific uh, content domain. So this is a this is a one of the definitions that is given for serious games. Uh, you can think about it. <coughs> many many people who who have written about game gamification and serious game uh, think that serious games and gamification are very different things. They 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 can be categorized differently. But uh, <coughs> Professor Kerb thinks differently. He thinks that gamification and serious games overlap in many ways. So in, in the next class, you will learn how these two are different, how serious games and gamification are different. Um, but I would like to share you his, his opinion. Um, serious games and gamification have uh, specific, the same objective, to solve problems, motivate people, promote behavior change using game-based thinking and techniques. 
both of them, CS games and gamification. CS games tend to use games within a well-defined uh, game space like computers, uh, uh, other computer applications such as Wii or those kind of things. Those are CS games. On the other hand, gamification seems to use uh, games outside such a confined space, like for example, running, right? So when you play a serious game, um, you sit down and well, you can be standing or doing anything, but it's within a confined er uh, environment, computer application environment. But uh, a gamification usually requires you to be outside of a certain game environment or interact between a game environment and the real world environment. And then, uh, uh, he also argues why these two words can be used interchangeably. But next week, you'll hear how you can, we can separate the two. So this is uh, uh, part of my final slides. Um, why is gamification important? Uh, well, it's gaining popularity and the power of the digital age yes is enhancing gamification a lot um, but it's very important to notice that um, you actually often don't need some technology for gamification like the country's example so you don't need some kind of technology necessarily but because of technology so what technology does is it just increases the distribution and the scale that we can apply uh, serious games or gamification. And then also it harnesses the uh, uh, ad uh, advancement in connectedness, such as in social media. Um, they also have a genuine potential to create unique learning uh, uh, experiences. These are some figures outside the health uh, environment. They say that on average, uh, a video game player has been playing games, particularly in the US, for more than 12 years. 26% of uh, people uh, playing games are over the age of 50. I don't know. And uh, in the United States, game software generate over 10 billion US dollars per year. 67% of American households play computer games. In the United Kingdom, they spend 200 million on games. France spends 220, and Japan spends quite a lot on games per year. So gamification offers an interesting opportunity to engage audiences that are not necessarily willing to be engaged. At times, experiencing information overload, like we see, we saw in, in, in the first, one of the first slides that I gave. Um, you, can, you can check out this website. Uh, they say that the world's 2,000 biggest companies will use gamification by 2019. 70% of them. Unfortunately, um, gamification is only 25% technology and the rest, 75%, is more behavior, more psychology based. And gamification actually is applied to more than just health. The other areas that uh, gamification is usually applied to, but uh, in this, in this, maybe I'd like to share with you some of the applications of serious games, particularly in health, that you can go and really check out for yourself and, and read, read about. Um, this is one of the I consider to be one of the iconic uh, papers in serious games or gamification. Uh, it was uh, published in Pediatrics. It's a well-ranked uh, uh, journal. Um, it's, it, it's, it's designed for cancer uh, kids with cancer. And 
one of their main findings was that uh, the, the kids that were randomized to play a game showed improvement in adherence compared to the kids who, who were not randomized to the game. So they were more adherent to treatment regime for cancer. So you can check out this paper. Very interesting. It was published, I think, in 2008, very, very early. Uh, uh, and I think professors from Stanford worked on this paper. And more recently, in 2013, uh, there's a paper published in the Journal of International AIDS Society, again, a very uh, well-ranked uh, uh, journal uh, in HIV uh, and AIDS. Its title is Reducing Shame in a Game that Predicts uh, HIV Risk Reduction for Young Adults, Men Who Have Sex with Men. It's also a randomized uh, uh, trial uh, delivered nationally over the internet. I also encourage you to check out this paper. Um, one of their main findings was that exposure to a serious game intervention led to immediate shame reduction for those in the serious game intervention compared to those um, that were not in the group. So these papers show some early successes in serious games for changing behavior or improving certain health outcomes in, in, in what we are probably working on. Um, there's also uh, this journal, Journal of Medical Internet Research, uh, uh, Serious Games. And actually today, this morning, uh, we just had good news. They, they accepted one of uh, our papers, so I'm very happy. It's a very good way to start this class. <laughs> so uh, it's a serious journal of serious games. It's a multidisciplinary journal devoted to computer, web, and mobile application uh, that incorporates elements of gaming. But what I want to underline here is that it's, it's multidisciplinary. I think the area of serious games, mostly, you cannot do it by yourself. I don't think it's possible to anyone, anyone to do it by themselves. You need a very elaborate team of experts, psychologists, statisticians, um, experts in game design, in project management. Um, many, many components are needed to, to come together in a multidisciplinary fashion. So please check out, check out this, this publication, this journal. Um, one of the first and one of the most famous in this area. Yeah, one of, not the only. Then there's also this one. Uh, it's Games for Health Journal. Unfortunately, Kyoto University, it's not open access, and Kyoto University does not uh, maybe surprise, subscribe to this channel. So uh, we cannot access this channel yet. It's, it's not new, but relatively new channel. Um, they focus on applications of game technology for improving physical, mental well-being. So you can check it out. Uh, sometimes they have some free free articles in in, in in these channels. So feel free to check to check them out. You might learn a thing or two, and share with us what you've learned. All right. So looking forward to next week. Thank you. Thank you very much.